Hi, this is Nick, and I'm here to review There's Always Tomorrow, the 1955 Douglas Sirk film that's being released courtesy of Kino Lorber on August 25th, 2020. Uh, Douglas Sirk is certainly a favorite director of mine, and this is definitely um, uh, one of my favorites of what I guess you'd consider his the B side of his filmography. Uh, came out, he did three films in 1955 alone. Uh, one of them was Captain Lightfoot, a Rock Hudson um, period piece that isn't very well known, and of course, All That Heaven Allows, the Jane Wyman classic that would be remade several times, uh, including by Fassbinder and Todd Haynes. Um, There's Always Tomorrow reunites uh, Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck, who of course starred in the film noir classic Double Indemnity. Uh, Stanwyck had also previously worked with Douglas Sirk in All I Desire, which uh, has some similarities as well. I think that this is not a film that uh, achieved as much excitement because most of um, Douglas Sirk really was respected, uh, beloved uh, for his filmography after uh, he stopped making films. His last film, of course, was 1959's Imitation of Life with uh, Lana Turner, uh, where other filmmakers would go back and really appreciate the subversive themes that were going on in you know what otherwise looked like soapy 1950s melodramas, many that were uh, completely ridiculous, uh, such as Magnificent Obsession uh, with Jane Wyman and Rock Hudson, which of course was a remake as well. Um, There's Always Tomorrow is uh, uh, stars Fred McMurray as uh, Clifford Groves, who owns a successful toy manufacturing company in Pasadena. Um, he's just presented as a man that uh, is kind of unhappy and bored with his life. He's been married to Joan Bennett for 20-some years, and they have three children together. Um, she's just preoccupied with the children all the time and has no time for him. Uh, and he tries to take her out on a date to the movies for her birthday and she can't even do that because she's got to take the youngest to ballet lessons. But while she's out of the house, in walks Barbara Stanwyck as Norma Vale, uh, past romance, although they didn't really ever define it as such. Um, she's visiting from New York. She's, uh, she used to work for him. She's now a very successful uh, designer, business owner herself. Uh, just kind of kind of dropped in for a visit. Uh, I love that her name, her last name is Vale and his is Groves, uh, indicating um, he's got this full life and he's part of this community, he's part of a grove and she's this Vale, this empty valley as this widow who just has a business but no love or children of her own. Um, as they rekindle their romance, we see some repeated Douglas Sirk themes, uh, such as the children interfering, um, his oldest son played by William Reynolds, uh, an actor, uh, if you like a lot of 50s films, might recognize from The Thing That Couldn't Die, uh, which has a really good mystery science theater track to it, um, is very upset that his father might be falling out of his love with his, falling out of love with his mother and seeing another woman, and uh, shows a lot of uh, misplaced hostility towards uh, Barbara Stanwyck. Um, but as much as Barbara Stanwyck is playing a woman uh, ahead of her time, so is Pat Crowley as uh, William Reynolds' fiance Anne, who really goes in on him um, and eventually tells him, I can't love a, a man I don't respect. Uh, which, to hear a young woman say that in 1955, you know, uh, it, it, it's a film ahead of its time. As long as, as well as Fred McMurray <laughs> describing his marriage as a tomb of my own making, um, there, it's. I think that it's not a hit because it's not escape is fair. This is this is pure psychological melodrama, and it, with not a happy ending, but one that is hopeful for Norma Vale, for Barbara Stanwyck flying back to New York without the burden of this romance that really, as she alludes in a, a last bit of dialogue, really would have crushed their potential affair. Um, overall, I would give this film uh, four to five stars, and Kino Lorber's. Um, Blue or release of it, three out of five. Thank you.